Hey guys, welcome back to the Motion Raceworks YouTube channel. Today is Tech Tip Tuesday, so here we go. So we did a tech tip on catch cans years ago, uh, back at our old shop, back before we made this top loader style catch can. So I wanted to kind of give an update and a new video with some fresh content and talk about what the purpose of a catch can is, how we plummet on our vehicles and why it benefits your project. If you aren't familiar with an engine, there's basically a couple dynamics working. There's the top end of the engine, the pressure on top of the piston, and then there's below the piston, which is everything beneath the piston, inside the crankcase, where your oil is, they call it the crankcase. And there's a term called PCV, and that's positive crankcase ventilation. Positive crankcase ventilation is a must have for any internal combustion engine. Basically when a piston moves up and down inside of the bore in the engine, it's creating a force and moving air around and it's creating a positive air force. So what happens when that occurs is oil stability is sacrificed, meaning as you create pressure, oil is gonna stay in places and move to places where it shouldn't be because you have pressure acting on it. Another problem with that is as you start to gain more pressure, your seals are actually going to try and let that pressure out because it's gonna overcome the force of what the seals are putting pressure on, say your crank or any other seal inside your engine, valve cover, gaskets, basically anything that is connected to the crankcase. So that pressure is gonna make its way from the crankcase up through like your push rod holes into the valve covers. It's gonna push valve cover seals. It's gonna push valley cover seals, intake seals, the ones that actually seal it to like the valley on like an older style engine and everything else in between. So if you don't take care of the ventilation in a proper way, it's gonna find its way out of your engine some way. And typically that's associated with a leak or some type of other major problem. And let me tell you, they're never coming from areas that you want them. Leaky oil everywhere from your main seals or your valve cover gaskets is never a fun thing. So what can we do to avoid all of that problem? Well, there's two steps. A proper baffled valve cover. So that what that means is that we're going to attempt to get the air out and keep direct streams of oil from getting out of the engine. So in our billet valve cover lineup or in our billet valve cover attachments, as seen here, there's actually a uh, baffle on the bottom. So basically what we're trying to do is make sure no direct streams of oil inside of your valley or valve covers can shoot straight into the fitting and out of the engine. This makes the air go around and oftentimes we have it go in multiple layers. So it has to go around a complex series of baffling to make it to that fitting, which it just will not do unless you have some type of issue like a messed up piston ring or some other issue that is really over uh, pressurizing your crankcase. So basically the oil is blocked from coming out, but the air is gonna find its way out. It's like if you put a hole in a balloon or anything else that's holding air, it's just gonna go out wherever there's an open orifice. And the open orifice is going to be lines that connect to this catch can or whatever catch can you're using. So years ago when we were frustrated with what was available on the market, we decided we're gonna start from scratch and create a catch can that solves all the problems and is the best operating vented catch can on the market. The reason why it's that way is we incorporated baffling inside of it. We incorporated how your lines need to be ran as well as a filter. This is based off of a performance application. So next I'm gonna tell you exactly how I would run lines and vent your engine to a catch can on any performance application. The simplicity of it, just like I said before, you wanna make sure you have some type of baffling on your valve covers. Now the only time when I don't really suggest that is if you have like a high horsepower car boosted on methanol. Um, in those cases, a lot of guys will run what's called a uh, burn down tank. So they're basically gonna run lines off each valve cover with no baffling to a huge tank in the back of the car. And that's gonna have what's called a chimney that runs out the back of the car. Oftentimes on like big drag radial cars, you'll see these smoking out the back of the trunk. Um, that's their catch can. Methanol engines move an absolute ton of air uh, just because of the way that methanol works. Their crankcase is filled with air and they have to get a lot more of it out than a gasoline powered engine or even an ethanol powered engine. 
So back to your standard race car that's not a 3,000 horsepower boosted methanol vehicle. You're going to take one line from each valve cover that is preferably baffled and run it into this catch can. For instance, on this Nova, we mounted the catch can right off of the firewall and we just have one line from the back of each valve cover coming off of our billet uh, valve covers going right into the catch can. Now, a lot of people are worried about smell or uh, steam or whatever coming off of it. And the answer I always have is a proper baffled valve cover is not gonna create those issues. Some engines have a little bit more PCV than others or require more PCV than others, but a, uh, a proper working system just isn't gonna have those problems. So basically the positive air pressure is making its way out of the engine and it's coming in these two ports. From there, it's gonna go through two baffle systems and it's gonna run to the bottom of the can. The baffle systems are designed to knock the oil out of the pressurized air because there's always gonna be a certain amount of particulate. Depending on how good your baffling is, you might have less or more. Um, and as soon as that is knocked out, it turns the corner and comes up and goes out of a filter. And that's gonna release all of that pressure to the atmosphere without releasing the oil. Our whole goal here is to get positive crankcase pressure out of the engine knock the oil out of the airstream and get the air out in an efficient manner. That's it. We don't need to put it back into the intake. We don't need to do anything else fancy with it. That's all we're trying to accomplish. Putting the air back into the intake of the engine is a chance to put oil back in the engine. There's always gonna be some remnant particulate. If you put oil into the intake, it is a recipe for disaster. It causes detonation. It causes all the things you take apart a stock engine and see oily, crusty intakes um, and intake valves, and it all starts to become a messy disaster that causes parts failure. And on a performance application, oil coming into the uh, charge is never a good idea. So what we do is we plug the intake up. Um, this will require tuning on a vehicle um, if you are starting from scratch and had it traditionally plumbed into the intake because you are changing the amount of air going into the intake, but it's usually pretty minimal and it's not a big deal typically. So going back to baffling, like I said before, make sure your baffling is uh, up to par. If you stop it coming out of the engine, it's way easier to handle it here. Our catch can is designed to keep oil off the filter. A lot of um, initial early style catch cans that you saw in the market were simply lines coming into a can with no baffling and going right out the filter. Those are the guys that you'll see typically at the track and they will have uh, sweat bands wrapped around here or towels or whatever zip tied and they're typically dripping with oil and stuff like that because there's no baffling in here. Um, this catch can is meant to do it, so you can just simply drain it between rounds or whatever amount of time it takes to collect any meaningful amount. Like on this car or our Gen 5 Nova, I never empty the catch cans to be quite honest with you. I at one point did have some catch can issues and it was because I had uh, some intake valve issues. So piston rings, intake valves, exhaust valves, any of that stuff having any type of issue can cause ex excess crankcase pressure and that'll typically show up in the amount of oil and discharge that's showing up here. Um, typically you'll see a vehicle that never had catch can issues start to get oil in it. Um, maybe your car's already past that point, but just something to keep in mind. So in summary, keep it simple. All we want to do is run a line from each valve cover into a catch can. If you have questions about how much catch can or how much ventilation your engine or combo needs, definitely give us a call. We're happy to kind of assist and give you guys some direction. Every combo might need a little bit more. Um, for instance, like a 2000 horsepower ethanol boosted application might need two 12AN single catch cans to be perfect. Uh, most gasoline engines move have a lot less positive crankcase ventilation, so you can get away with one catch can on like 1500 horsepower and below combos. But every combo is a little bit different and we deal with this stuff every day. We're happy to talk about it with you. You can also shoot us an email to sales at motionraceworks.com and we'll help to answer questions there as well. Hope this video helped. If you guys have questions, holler at us. If you have ideas for the next Tech Tip Tuesday, drop them below in the comment section. We'd love to hear from you guys. Until next time, we'll see you later.